This is Twit. This episode of Tech Break is brought to you by ACI Learning. Your IT skills are outdated in about 18 months. Stay ahead of the curve and strengthen your IT expertise with affordable certification-based learning that will launch or advance your career. Individuals use the code TWIT30 for 30% off a standard or premium individual IT pro membership at go.acilearning.com slash TWIT. Chris, do you want to take it away with one of your first shortcuts? Yeah, do we do we want to like flip flop off like round robin style? Uh, yeah, go, let's, let's do shortcuts? that. Okay, okay, yeah. all right, perfect. So the first one I want to start off with, I'm going to cut over to my iPad here. It's called Capture Cut, and you you'll see a theme of the, like my shortcut names. They all they tend to end in cut because I thought I was being very clever. But what this shortcut does right here is it makes a uh, the quick note style option so you know with notes with the built-in notes app it basically gives you that but through shortcuts so if i was just to run this right now it would ask for text and it would create a new note in my uh, app obsidian that's what i use for all my writing my note taking or well, most most of my note take that's a long story we won't get into that but this allows me to just quickly create a note in obsidian and then it drops it into that folder but where things get a little interesting is let me let me cut away here really quick because i don't remember what's on my ipad home screen and i've been doing a bunch of business contract stuff sorry guys uh okay there we go so if i was to go to we'll just we'll just pop up uh we'll go to our friends maxstories.net and go to uh, a meet a piece right here with on mercury weather now if i was to run capture cut which i could do right from if i could spell correctly capture cut right from this which has the safari page open in the background and i can run it right here from spotlight where it gets really cool is it'll ask me if i want to attach this link and it will put the markdown link so it'll grab the website's domain and the link for whatever is open on that page and then it allows me to write a quick note so uh check out this app and then i can hit done and it will save it and all the stuff resets because i'm on the betas but then what can happen is i can come over here into um into obsidian and i have a folder called quick note and boom i have my note right there it has the link right there to the story i can check that out really cool and it does this all using regular expressions which is something that looks really complex it is kind of confusing when you get into it but once you get into it it, it kind of starts to make sense. There's websites out there to help you with it, but it matches all that and it builds it all out. Uh, there's some if statements in here, so it handles things differently if you're on iOS or iPadOS versus macOS and things like that. But this is a shortcut I use multiple times a day, all day long, uh, just to quickly jot down a note about something. And I, I really like it a lot. That's great. Um, and honestly, things like that end up being just such a useful tool to use every day. Um, you know, I have uh, a number of other things which work in a similar fashion. But the first one I'm going to talk about, Chris, because you were interested in this, I know a whole bunch of uh, listeners have asked me about this before. It's customizing this Ultra button on my Apple Watch Ultra because, you know, it's it's a great idea to have a button there. But if, and I'll just open the watch uh, app so that I can show folks if they're watching the video. Um, but what happens is if you uh, have an Apple Watch Ultra um, and it's currently your active watch like mine is, and you go into the watch app, into the settings, um, and you tap on action button, then it gives you a whole bunch of choices of things like workout, stopwatch, waypoint, backtrack, dive, torch, shortcut, or none. And that's it. And it's not aware of what's going on. So for example, if you're in the middle of a workout, it doesn't know that and it won't do something different based on that. Now, other app developers can hook into this, but shortcut is an option that's right there. So of course I went with shortcut um, and then uh, I, I configured it. So I have a shortcut that it's running um, and I've, I've, been, I've been tweaking it. So this is a, a second version of the shortcut, but what happens in my shortcut to start with is uh, I get my, my current uh, focus mode. I'll just move that action there because I, I only need the location if I'm in my fitness focus mode. So I get my focus mode. Um, because my focus modes turn on and off automatically a whole bunch of the time. And so it checks. And if I am in a fitness focus mode, 
It gets my current location and it gets the town or the city from there. And if uh, it's Chippenham, which is, you know, my hometown, then it will start a bar a workout for, for my ballet classes. Otherwise, it starts a gymnastics workout for me. And it's really simple, but this allows me to actually start a, a different workout depending on where I am. So if I'm usually if I'm uh, not, uh, you know, in my hometown, then it's, you know, I'm, it's because I'm taking a gymnastics class if it, if this is uh, automatically on. Um, and then what I've done after this, and this is really important for this, is I use the stop shortcut action. So it's not going to continue going through and checking all of the other um, things that are happening here. It will just stop after it's enabled uh, one of these two workouts for me. Um, and then um, the other option is uh, currently if I'm driving, then I'll get my driving playlist and it will shuffle my, the songs in my driving playlist. It won't repeat. Um, and then again, it stops the shortcut so that that's it. So if, for example, I'm in my car and I'm driving along, music's not playing. Instead of having to like tap through CarPlay and figure out like, like, where is my driving playlist and things like that? No, I can just press the button on the side of my wrist, which is safe to do while driving. Um, you know, it's very quick and easy to press. And then a few seconds later, it will start playing my driving playlist for me, which is perfect. So yeah, this is what I have configured so far. I'm playing around with other options as well. Like, you know, like from a work mode, then maybe it needs to pull me into like a work meeting mode or something. But yeah, I haven't decided exactly what I want to do yet. This is a, a work in progress, but it's really useful to be able to do short use shortcuts for that that's awesome i okay i can't wait to get an apple watch ultra i i was going to buy one when they originally came out but then i was like ah oh, what do i, I don't want to spend the money and i was moving and i was just like ah oh, it's too much I want mm. that old. I want that. I want that action button. Oh my gosh, that would yeah. be so cool. Yeah. The only thing I'll say is, if you've got small wrists like I do, like the the ultra is actually bigger than my wrist. Uh, it's also a little uh, wobbly because uh, turns out when you've got really small wrists, getting a a watch strap for the Apple Watch Ultra um, that doesn't like leave lots of space on your wrist is really hard to do. Um, so I've, I've been playing with this third party strap. It's a little bit wobbly, but yeah, it, this is actually wider than my wrist. If they did a small ultra. I would love it. It would be great, but they don't. So Apple, come on. You've got like two weeks. You can do it. You can do it in two weeks. Make a small ultra for me. Well, well, I'm 6'2", and I have really big hands, so watch sizes have never been an issue for me, but I do have a watch band recommendation for you. It's from a company called Nomad Goods, and what's nice about it is this, watch, this band was made for the Apple Watch Ultra, but it works for the regular watches, uh, but mm -hmm. it has... Basically, you have the little holes that you connect it to, and it can go pretty small too. So that that mm -hmm. might work for you if, if that's something you're up for. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, I should I, definitely I check that out. And they're not very expensive. I think they're like fifty bucks, which compared to like Apple's, you know, watch bands, that's not that bad. Yeah, it's just, it's basically the same price. Uh, Nomad have uh, sponsored iOS today before as well. I remember them uh, sponsoring us with their uh, AirPods and AirPods Pro cases. So I should definitely oh, nice. be checking out the uh, the uh, uh, Apple Watch strap to go with that. Awesome. Yeah, nice. They they have well, a glow in the dark one right now that's limited edition that I really want, but I haven't ordered it yet. I feel like I'd love that and hate that at the same time. You know, I wear my watch I, I, while I sleep, so it tracks my sleep, and I feel uh, like yeah. that could be a problem. Yeah, see, that's my issue, too, is if it's not pitch black, I can't go to sleep. So, uh, yeah, it, it seems like a cool gimmick. But anyways, back to shortcuts. I got a cool one for you all. I promise this is this, this isn't going to be me just rambling about Apple Watch bands. I promise, uh, though, I could do that. OK, the next one I have for you all is called Snippet Cut. And this right here is my snippet manager. I use another shortcut I use all day long. Um, I'm sure everyone out there has a bunch of links, URLs, email addresses, directions, things that they type all the time, all day long. And I wanted something because I primarily work for my iPad, but I wanted something that would sync uh, my snippets to my iPhone, my iPad, and my Mac. So this is where Snippet Cuts comes in. It does require the app Data Jar, uh, but Data Jar is a great app. I use it all the time. Um, you have to basically create a, a list in there called Snippet Board. Uh, there's instructions in the shortcut and things like that. But basically the way this works is when you run it, it asks you if you want to add something to snippet board or if you want to get something from snippet board. If you add something to snippet board, it will take whatever is currently on your clipboard and add it to the snippet board. So that way you can retrieve it at any time. And right now it just does text. I used to have it do images and things like that, but it, it would break 
often and it just shortcuts didn't like dealing with that kind of mixed media kind of thing. Uh, so I just have it doing text. But if we hit this other option right here that says get item from snippet board, this pulls up a list of all the things on here. And the list is quite a bit longer, but I'm not going to scroll down because it's got a bunch of personal information below this. And uh, I don't, you know, I like you all, but I don't really want to give you my address. Uh, but here you can just click on any one of these. So I will click on just this one right here, youtube.com. This is my YouTube channel's URL. I'll just copy that, click on that, and it copies it right to my clipboard. So now I can just go and paste that anywhere I want uh, and add that you know, to any kind of like uh, document I'm filling out or if somebody's asking me for a link or an email address or something, I could just give it to them. I know it's right because it's in snippet board. I know those are all the correct information. I'm not trying to type something by hand all the time. I'm not trying to remember something like a URL or anything like that. It's always there. I can pull it up on any device. And that to me is extremely handy. Oh, that, that is great, Chris. I really love that. Um, you know, it, it's one of those things where just saving yourself time is such a useful thing. And you can do a lot with the settings keyboard options to automatically expand things. Like for me, if I type at, at, uh, so the at symbol twice, then it will automatically input my domain name. So I can, you know, write custom, uh, you know, email addresses like uh, twit.tv at rosemaryorchard.com, uh, which uh, spoiler forwards to my iOS today uh, email so that any feedback goes into there. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of things you can do with this just to make life easier and one of the things i do is my alarm clock is evil my alarm clock is very <laughs> evil um because um what what i do um i've just realized is actually using a deprecated action so i'm going to need to fix that is i use this great app called signals for home kit and signals for home kit is an amazing app because what you can do is you can have um home kit lights set up and then you can use signals to say flash uh the lights green like five times and then go back to whatever they were and so i do something similar with signal for home kit and i'm gonna have to update this but i when i tap the snooze on my wake up alarm so i created a personal automation and it's for when my wake up alarm is snoozed and i'll just show folks who are watching the video and walk people through it what you can do how you do that so you tap on the plus in the automations tab um, and then you you look at uh the personal automations options and you're looking for specifically alarm and then you want to set your alarm to be the wake up alarm and then is snoozed and then run immediately because guess what if you're hitting snooze i very much doubt you're going to manually go and hit the yeah wake me up evilly button please um that that's not going to work um so there we go so that's that and then uh what this does is this uh runs my 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 get up signal and so what this does is it flashes the lights that are next to my bed like this horrible like bluey green color and it a hundred percent and it's it's deliberately chosen to not be a, a super nice color and to wake me up it works because I don't really hit snooze all that much anymore. Um, so yeah, it's very simple. Uh, you could hook this up to your spouse's phone. Uh, FYI, if you get put on the sofa or the couch after that, that's your own fault. You could hook this up to your kids' alarms, uh, whatever it is, or you could just hook it up to anything uh, that you know uh, you have as a personal automation, so that you can have your lights flash automatically in certain colors. I've just realized. I have another uh, uh, shortcut that I'm going to talk about in a little bit that I should definitely be hooking this into because, uh, yeah, I should have like flashing lights to remind me of meetings during my day, obviously. So we'll have to get back to that in a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. I do something similar, but I don't use that app. I just use the built in home actions where uh, when my alarm goes off my bedroom lights, I have I have three Philips Hue light bulbs in the ceiling and then I have a, a bedside lamp. So I have four Philips Hue bulbs total. They go to 10% for one minute and that's kind of basically my warning. And after a minute, they go to 100% uh, because <laughs> I need to get up and I need to get going. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, it's uh, it's it, it gets very bright in a 12 by 12 room. 12, uh, so yeah, it's it's it, it definitely does the trick. 